Little one, there you are. Come in, come in, come in. Thank you for agreeing to meet me on such short notice. I know this is a little out of the blue, but... No, I know that we talked about going to meet the, uh, council together, but I realized that you are not as versed in vampire society as I'd like for you to be, and it behooves me to try and explain a few things. Oh, don't get me wrong. I don't think you're going to make a fool of yourself or anything. Just, I'd like to avoid any issues that could arise. <laughs> if I'm being truthful, mostly from their point of view. I have issue with the newer generation of Frosthaven Vampire. Oh, when Elias came out here all those years ago, the vampires that settled Frosthaven had a whole different idea about them. Unfortunately, an influx of new blood has taken the vampire world here by storm. Yes, I know. I've said quite a few things about new blood to you, and perhaps it's time to just lay it all on the table. Would you care to sit? I took the liberty of preparing something, and I've got an excellent bottle of wine to pair with it. It's a filet mignon with a wine reduction sauce made from the same wine that we'll be drinking. It will pair excellently together alongside some roasted veg and a rice peel off. A simple, elegant, and wholly satisfying. <laughs> Well, I could pretend to give you the Hannibal Lecter treatment, tell you that I took this fillet from a rude insurance investigator or perhaps a lippy barista, but I think we both know that I would be um, exaggerating the truth there, wouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Little one, you know me far too well. No, oh, don't get me wrong, I love the show. Uh, beautiful from start to finish, but I don't eat people and the joke would fall flat after about two minutes. Plus, if I'm being... Completely fair, I would never denigrate this fillet by calling it human and playing jokes with it. You have to understand, I do actually take my culinary skills and cuisine in general quite seriously. Just because I don't have to eat doesn't mean I don't enjoy eating. I've been alive long enough to meet and eat with numbers of Michelin star chefs. Oh, Gordon Ramsay is a treat, don't get me wrong. Uh, 
little one, I have a theory about older vampires. And in fairness, that theory is probably why most of the vampires here in Frosthaven upset me the way they do. When you get to my age, simple acquisition just doesn't cut it anymore. Take my apartment, for example. I love my penthouse here, and it's lovely, but I don't need 12 others all over Frosthaven. I have a small place back home in Europe, but... We have talked about this. <laughs> this is not me, per se. I mean, it is me, but... Deacon is the man I choose to be. I did, however, buy Ivan's home, and I've kept it up ever since. Well, mostly a reminder. Who I am, who I was, and how far I've come. Yeah. Well, I don't think you'd enjoy seeing it. Uh, it's not much to look at. In fact, it was basically one room. I just bought the damn thing and then bought the building that it's in. Yes, um, the modern equivalent would have been an apartment complex. Uh, it's clearly not that glamorous, but... I wanted it nonetheless, and then realized that if I didn't own the entire building, then questions would start being asked about the hundreds of years old man who owns the one bedroom. No, yes, it's basically just one bedroom. There's a small chamber pot in the corner that's got a cloth around it. Very uncivilized. Very... I'm trying to find a better word than hovel. Yes, I can't quite find one myself either, but it's a hovel, let's be fair. Yes, yes, getting back to it. Um, My problem has always been that most vampires these days don't seem to understand that when you get to my age, the things that you have don't matter anymore. I keep the penthouse and the hovel. <laughs> but I don't own hundreds of properties and, you know, an excessive amount of cars and motorcycles. Now, now, a few cars and bikes is not excessive. Ten bikes is not excessive. Most of those are collector's items. They don't even get ridden that much anymore. I will have you know the Vincent is the first Vincent Black Shadow. The very first. Go ask the little werewolf about it. He practically was drooling. <laughs> yes, well. And Caleb can't help it. It's just in his nature. He's a werewolf. And dogs drool. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd never say that to him. It's still funny, though. Yes, yes, uh, mm. you continually get me off topic. I love that about you. Anyway, I believe that when you hit this age, if what you 
have to show for it is just material, then frankly, you've wasted your afterlife. Immortality is a gift, one that can be used to master anything you wish. Think about it. If even half of the vampires out there thought the way I do, we'd have no more disease, no more war, no more sickness of any kind, medical or otherwise. Immortality is the greatest of gifts. And most of my kind just squander it. Well, there have been one or two through the ages. And those who rose above, those who studied science, art, literature, those who made something of themselves. But they are few and far between. <sighs> Vlad's library was incredible. Books that had never been printed and never will be printed again. Knowledge that even the gods themselves would fear. He had it all. Well, for me, unfortunately, my endeavors are now culinary and more business focused. Oh, no, 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 don't get me wrong. I don't focus on business to try to gain. I'm not looking to get richer. I have enough money. But I can fund those who don't. I can build them up. Startups that have no chance in hell of a loan. I've got that. I've got... Plenty of investment opportunities that will better the world. Biotech startups. New technologies to bring communication and education to every corner of the world. That is the legacy I wish to leave. Well, I would try my hand at science or mathematics or any of that, but I've never had a head for numbers or figures or advanced calculations. Unfortunately, the realm of human endeavor that I mastered, uh, it's not one you bring to the dinner table. Warfare, little one. That is what I truly excel at. Warfare. It's what I plan to bring to bear against Orion when I finally figure out where he is and what he's doing. I don't wish to kill him. Truly, I don't. But I can't also let him wreak havoc across Frosthaven and the world. I need to solve the problem that is my son, one way or another. Yes, my son. As much as I wish to... find a way that he could be not mine, he is... He is my flesh, my blood, my bone. And I have a responsibility to him. To show him the light or... Barring that, to stop his reign of terror. He sent a hunter after us. I cannot forgive that. But... Hopefully we're not past the precipice. He can still be brought back. I have to believe that. Yes, well, I think the council believes differently, but... 
That's why we're going to meet them. Yes, vampire society and etiquette. Well, to start with, I call them the council because, again, most of them are just young upstarts, and I like to put them in their place as much as I humanly can. Officially, they are the coven. Coven is made up of families of vampires, but I call them the council mostly to just piss them off. The council has one lead. In this case, a young vampire by the name of Corellia, though she goes by Cory. Right? I would always go by Corellia. And Cory is so. human. Be as if everyone out there called me Deek instead of Deacon. Well, again, I'm not exactly going to go by Ivan these days, now am I? Yes, anyway. Corey is the leader of the council, but it acts more democratically than most. Every family has a say, and on most big issues, they will vote. From what I understand, though, there's a bit of a unanimous feel in the room for this. Well, I wouldn't go so far as to say they're censuring me, but... They do have a belief about how I acted, and what I should do about it going forward. They know they can't get angry at me for having birthed a damn fear. They have no standing for that. However, they can blame me for that action leading to all of the foolishness that you saw earlier. Yes, well, Cory and I are not, uh, bosom buddies, as it were. She doesn't like me. Oh, I think if she could, she would have the council sideline me entirely. Hell, she might even have them try to extinguish me, as it were. Oh, yes. The coven, sorry, I should get used to saying that, has the ability to exterminate vampires that become a problem. She's wanted me exterminated for the last century. The reason she gives, or the real reason? <sighs> the reason she gives is that I'm a problem. I'm too old and I have my fingers in too many places and the council can't control me. The real reason, well... Spurned lover. If we're going to put it in the most blatant of terms, a spurned lover. There was a time Corellia and I were quite fond of one another, but she wanted more, and I just didn't see it between us. Yeah, she was fun, don't get me wrong, but in the end, fun does not build a solid foundation. Trust, respect, mutual goal, that's what builds a good foundation. She and I didn't have it.
Oh, she didn't really respect me. She wanted my power. But when I refused her, she took that far more personally than I expected her to. C'est la vie. Hell hath no fury and all that, but you deserve to know what you're walking into, especially between her and I. That is such a tawdry way to put it. She wasn't my... Did you really just say booty call? <sighs> Humans. No. She was not my... Booty call. I did enjoy the time we spent together. She's lively, funny, has great taste in art, but... It didn't work. She took it a lot more personally than I did. Yes, well, turning down a marriage proposal usually sours things. Yes, well, unfortunately that is the case. And now we must wade through that quagmire. Oh, I've probably pissed off most of the families in the coven a dozen times over. Again, though, when one of your closest friends is the founding vampire of Frosthaven, nobody really questions you. Wait a minute, have I never told you about Elias? Oh, I simply must. He's fascinating. A bit younger than me, to be sure, but fascinating nonetheless. Well, that is a story that takes a good amount of time and a good amount of wine. This will be the first of many bottles, if that's what you wish to hear. <laughs> Little one, you've read my mind. Where to begin with Elias? Ah. It all began in a little backwater north of Boston. The 1600s. Salem. The Puritans were up in arms about something or other, and Elias started to see the writing on the wall. 